as in the Milgram study. While Milgram is doing that, I'm reading Goulding's Lord of the Flies. And Goulding's Lord of the Flies, if you remember, is about uh, how one of the boys changes his appearance, paints himself, and now can get the other boys to do it. They can do something that they were unable to do before. It was the, it's about the power of anonymity, the loss of control, that this inhibits sexual behavior and violent behavior. That was the theme of the story. Boys got hungry. The, the only food was, was pigs. They tried to kill the pigs. They couldn't do it. Killing was inhibited. These are Christian choir boys, according to Goulding. Golding. But now, simply changing your external appearance somehow disinhibited, liberated those, them from these constraints. And the question is, is that a novelist conceit or is that psych psychologically valid? Essentially, in the situation, what he's talking about is ordinarily what controls our behavior is cognitive control. It's thinking about what would happen if uh, I'm responsible, suppose I'm accountable if anybody found out. It's really self uh, self-constraint that keeps us from behaving immorally. And if you knock this out and you now make the situation the controlling factor, meaning wh what is everybody else doing and I'm going to do what everybody else does, uh, then you set up for evil. So we did a study all with women. Women students are now going to shock other women and we give a big cover story. We tell them it's a study of how we want to see how women um, how creative women can be under stress. Their job be creative, your job is to stress them. So again, it's reasonable, okay? Psychologists are interested in that relationship, but we don't want them to see your reaction. So we're going to put you in a big floppy lab coat and put a hood over you because we want to, we want to eliminate nonverbal behavior. And there's going to be four people in your group. We're going to take away your name, your one, your two, your three, your four. We put them in these little Ku Klux Klan outfits. Uh, and within the, within the frame of the study, nobody's laughing. It may, seems reasonable because they bought, again, the big cover story. Psycho social psychologists call it the cover story. It's, again, our big lie. And now we give them a sample of the shock. Uh, and again, whenever you hear about research, the first question, second question, uh, while you're listening, is what is the comparison group? What is the control group? These are women from the same population, NYU students in introductory psychology, randomly assigned, you flip a coin. They're in the condition where you're going to individuate them. You're going to emphasize the individuality. They have name tags, Cynthia Jackson, Mar Marsha Johnson. In the other group, we de-individuate. We say you're one, you're two, you're three. We cover your appearance. So it's really a study of individuation versus de-individuation. Now, there's nobody there like Milgram. You must go on. To, I leave the room. I go inside. They're looking through a screen, and here's the first of the victims. I give her something. She has to give me a remote associate, a creative thing. When an amber light goes on, your job, put your finger on the button. When a green light goes on, shock is in the system. You believe that because she starts screaming and twisting and turning. She's not being shocked, but there's a little light that she sees, and, and she's an actress. You have 20 trials that shock her. We drag her out and bring the second woman in. You have 20 trials again. So here's the data summarized. Here's, now, it's, it's how long you hold your finger down. So the, the dependent measure, the, the thing we're looking at is it's the shock duration. In the Milgram study, it was the intensity. This is how long you hold your finger down. The longer you hold your finger down, the more she's jumping and turning. This is the first 10 trials, and this is the second 10, averaged across the two different women. At the beginning, the women who are individuated start at a low level, and they stay there. What's critical is the women who we, we put in the Lord of the Flies phenomena. We make them, we t take away their identity, we made them feel anonymous. They begin twi giving twice as much and over time, more and more. This increase is a significant linear increase. That means as they do it, they do more and more and more. And we find this over and over again. I did this study with the Belgian military. Instead of hoods, we had masks. Instead of shock, we had people throwing styrofoam balls. No matter how you do it, if you make people anonymous and they put, you put them in a situation where they have permission in that situation to be violent, uh, they will be violent. So here's the anonymity of terror. We forget, America's first terrorists were Ku Klux Klan. They used anonymity as a way of, of promoting fear and terror, not only among blacks, but Catholics and, and uh, people throughout the South. Now, an anthropologist read the, the article I wrote on this and said, you know what? If it's true what you say then, we can get out of that, that little basement lab at NYU, and we can go in the real world, because 
The question here is, does it make a difference if, before warriors go to war, they change their appearance or not? It makes a difference in terms of how they treat their victims. So he said, in some cultures we know, they go to war without changing their appearance. In other cultures, they do the Lord of the Flies, and they paint themselves, uh, they put on disguises, or they wear masks. And so he went to the human area files and found uh, 23 societies, cultures, where there was two bits of evidence. Do the warriors change their appearance or not? And then the dependent measures, do they kill, torture, mutilate? Not pressing a button on a shock box, kill, torture, mutilate. And he found 15 cultures where warriors changed their appearance and eight cultures where they did not. And he found 10 cultures where they didn't kill, torture, mutilate, and 13 where they did. What happens if they don't change their appearance? If they don't change their appearance, they don't do anything. Only one of eight kill, torture, mutilate. But we don't care. We, we care about the red zone. If they change their appearance, what happens is 12 of 13 that kill, torture, mutilate first change their appearance. If they change their appearance, 12 of 15 kill, torture, mutilate. So what does that tell us? That tells us culture has wisdom. All wars are about young men sent to war to kill other young men by old men. That's what war is all about. The only difference is sometimes over property, sometimes over turf, sometimes over, over revenge. And so you put them in uniforms. That's what a military uniform is all about. Is to take any of us in our street clothes, put us in a uniform so we behave in a uniform way. We go through training to make us kill on demand, on command. But when the war is over, what do we do? We say, you must turn in a uniform. It is against the law to wear your uniform once you are discharged. And so you have military uniforms. In some cultures, you have masks. In some cultures, you paint yourself. Because we want killing to be situationally specific. Another way you can get good people to, to do bad things is you can dehumanize.